welcome to this tutorial on dealing with repositories. In this first section, we will look at Subversion, an industry standard inversion control software. Consider the following example. Three colleagues are required to work on the same document. One alternative would be to switch on track changes in Microsoft Word, make the changes and email the document back and forth. Two problems come to mind. Firstly, as we email the document around, it becomes quite difficult to know who has got the latest version. Track changes works well if the document passes sequentially from one to another, but as soon as people start working simultaneously on a document, it can become quite messy. Well, becoming messy is not unique to Microsoft Word alone, as we'll see later in the series of talks. Secondly, although, although track changes is a form of revision control, it only works with Microsoft Word documents. And in Matsum, we want to change and manage our data too, such as the population and network files. A repository is a term that we use in revision control that refers to a data structure. The data structure contains, amongst other things, a set of files and folders, a historical record of the changes that has been made to the repository, and various references and descriptions that we'll call commits, explaining in a more human-readable format who and what changes were made. The repository itself might be somewhere on the server, in the cloud, or locally, even on your local machine. Consider these three people again. Now they are interested in working on the same document that is stored on the repository. So let's first introduce some terminology. If A wants to work on the document, he needs to first check out a local copy. That means he makes an exact copy of the latest version of the repository on his own machine. In the same time, Ms. B and Mr. C might do the same thing. When A makes changes to the document, he's not working on the repository itself, but rather on his local copy. So, as you might guess, as soon as he starts editing his local copy, it becomes out of sync with the repository. And once it's finished, A should push his changes back and update the repository, and that is called committing. One of the many nice things of subversion is that commits are incremental, and that means that when A commits, the entire document is not copied back to the repository, but rather only the bits of the document that he has changed is sent to the repository. And once the repository is updated, the other users should update their local copies. It is therefore a good practice to always update just before you commit. And this ensures that when you want to push changes to the repository, some of those changes are not conflicting with changes that others have made since you've started working on your copy. But indeed, as we'll see later in this video series, sometimes we have to deal with these conflicts. There are a number of these revision control systems, but we will only look at Subversion. It is a free and open source piece of software that has become pretty much an industry standard. It also runs on a variety of operating systems. In this tutorial series, we will not deal with creating and managing repos uh, repositories, but only in interacting with them. And as such, we only need to install a Subversion client. And that is a software application that runs locally on your own machine. So in the next part of the tutorial, we'll show you how to install some of these clients depending on your operating system. Thank you for joining.